Tonight's talk focuses on drugs that are often used recreationally, yet have potentially important uses for the treatment of brain disorders. Ketamine for depression and cannabis for epilepsy. There is also uh, a fair amount of research and companies driving the development of LSD and psilocybin for other neurological conditions. So I will start actually by um, using an example that everybody would be familiar with. It's the example of aspirin. Everybody knows about aspirin. It's been synthesized uh, in the, the 1800s and used to treat fever, for example. But it's not until the 1970s that the, its properties on inflammation were, were discovered and also its anticoagulant properties. So what about medications to, to treat depression? What are the classical medications that you may be familiar with, like the Paxil, Prozac, Effexor, and so on, when we start giving them to patients, it generally takes, if they're gonna work, it takes about two weeks before you see an onset of action. And if they work, it's gonna work after a delay of, of six to eight weeks. So that's an incredibly long delay for somebody who is, uh, who is uh, suffering. So ketamine has been used, like I said, over the past 10 years or so at uh, very low doses and was shown to produce a uh, significant proportion of individual a marked antidepressant action, but not within two to three weeks or six weeks, but often between in, in within 24 hours. So after a single infusion, you can see that we went from 16 patients who had uh, important suicidal thinking, uh, and that was cut by half. And as we continued over time, we're left with only three people here where there was no effect on suicidal thinking. Yeah. Ketamine, so an, an agent that's been used for over 45 years in the medical field, can produce a significant decrease of, of depressive symptomatology, maybe about half the people who were very uh, ill and treatment resistant, meaning that they had failed several other medications before. Um, so I'm hoping to give you now a clinical view on the use of cannabinoids in uh, pediatric epilepsy. Um, for many years, it was marketed for, for treating different problems, including pain, muscle spasms in multiple sclerosis, and it is still used for this reason. Um, it's is used for nausea in uh, patients with cancer. And uh, more recently, but not for the first time in intractable epilepsy. Charlotte is a young girl that was diagnosed in early life with a catastrophic form of epilepsy called Dravet syndrome, for which medications don't tend to work well. She was given a specific breed of cannabis plant that had a very high concentration of CBD oil compared to the THC. So she, she did not become 100% seizure free, but her quality of life improved very significantly. Uh, there was a drop of seizures that was sustained with more alertness and overall a, a great improvement in quality of life. And many other families learned about Charlotte's story. The, the company that was producing this type of plant, specifically name, name the plant after Charlotte because of her success, and it's called a Charlotte's Web. So a lot of times you'll hear families asking, how do I access Charlotte Web cannabis oil rather than other uh, brands or other oils? Just like it is promising and there's a lot of role for cannabis and research, um, I always emphasize that it appears to be already as another option for treating epileptic seizures, but not necessarily a superior one.